So this is basically the system design architecture for TikTok. In the first part, we outline the six steps we need to follow in this system design. And if you can remember, we talked about the first one is mentioned the functional requirements, the non-functional requirements, the API endpoint, the database uh, choice and the database schema. Then we talked about performance and, and caching, and we talked about scalability. This is the six points that you have to outline. And this six points will now lead you to this architecture you see here. So let me tell you how these six points actually map to this architecture you see here. So functional requirement says you have to allow upload of video, like of video and follow users. And of course you have the users here and we have the API endpoints to perform these operations right here. And you can see, I'm going to talk about this in a minute. So we have a user making a request coming to this endpoint to upload and do all these things here. Now let's talk about the storage. So we have when a, a, uh, a video is uploaded, a video we mentioned, the, the core video um, file, we go into the blob storage, which is here. I think if you're able to mention that this can be an S3 bucket provided by Amazon, that would be great. So the video goes here and the actual video metadata, like the description, the URL, goes onto a relational database. We'll come to this in a minute. And we also have the timeline goes here. So let's talk about other ingredients, uh, other things we see in this case. So when we talk about caching, right? Caching is number five, I think number five. We talked about load balancing, CDN and caching, right? So when we Okay, these two are for uh, scalability and performance, we know. So let's talk about the CDN. When you have VR users from across the world, in different parts of the world, different continents, you want to actually cache a, 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 a very popular video in this location so that users from there can get it um, easily. So that's why we have to have CDN locations which might actually be in different data centers. So in this case, we have the user that is closest to a particular CDN location can actually get it from there. So that's why we have the CDN to improve performance. So since this is going to be scaling up and down, so we have all these APIs uh, inside services. This service is most likely, I recommend using microservices, so they actually can run in several instances of in a container. So load balancer here will actually be able to route the request to different uh, instances or different services here based on some uh, efficient algorithm, right? So if you have uh, the, the service that have lesser load might receive the coming request and uh, just like that. We have a number of algorithms like round, round robin list recently used, um, the number of algorithms, so that is not the the actual goal is we, we are not kind of going into the algorithms of how load balancers distribute the traffic, but these load balancers actually improve performance by actually distributing the, the services, so the, uh, the, the request coming to the services so that none of these instances or services get overloaded. So that's why we have these two items. So these two items comes on the scalability, on the performance. Now we talked about the timeline. The timeline is what you see when you log into your Facebook profile, or in this case, we are talking about TikTok. So these initial videos you see, uh, this is with what we call timeline or user feed. So this user feed, we don't want to um, generate it when the user logs in. We want this feed to be available, to be pre-computed and made available in a cache. So when the user now goes into uh, the application, he simply gets the feed from the cache. In that case, we don't do uh, this computation because this computation actually to generate the timeline is very expensive. It's actually handled here. I don't know if you can see the board. It's actually handled here in this recommender system. So this is a recommender system. So this takes a user, takes the user information, maybe the location of the user, the age, the gender, and a whole lot of metadata about the user, as well as the user that the user follows and then recommends a video 
for that user. So to be able to run this algorithm, which is expensive, we don't want to run it every time a user logs into the system. And that's why we want to pre-cache this information, this timeline information, maybe the first 20 user or uh, 20 videos to be shown to the user in a timeline have to be placed in this cache. Uh, so there is a number of caching technologies, for instance, um, Redis, yes, and a number of them, so you can read it up so that you can mention it in your interview. Um, so what else? Yeah, this is very important. So Charlie, if you look at the description on box, you can see explanation, link to explanation of this. So it's basically partitioning your database into horizontal partitions, maybe based on regions, based on data, or, or the, the uh, structure of the data, or based on certain criteria. Well, partition your database and group them into different partitions. And this is what we call Charlie. This is a very good imp uh, performance improvement um, uh, technology uh, we have here. So we have to shut this video coming in and before we store it into the relational database. And we have a read-only database here, which is actually deriving from here because since this application is going to be having so many reads, people are actually browsing and fetching video timelines much often than they are uploading videos. So we need to have a read-only database to actually reduce the load here. And in this case, we can scale the read database and the write database separately because this is um, receive different volumes of traffic. Uh, and that's why we need a read-only database which actually runs this analytics, uh, runs on data in the read-only database. And we have our block storage. Yeah, so, so this is how it is. Um, I hope you understand it. I don't think, I don't think it's very difficult to understand. So this is the basic architecture. If you have challenges or questions, please uh, let me know. And in the next part, we are now going to talk about Design Messenger. In this case, we talked about, uh, this is a video sharing application. We are going to now talk about a chat service and that will be in the next tutorial. Please subscribe to my channel if you've not subscribed and also follow me on my social network profile. Until we see in the next part, I'm Kainton, the Tech Pro.